out. Aiming it right, right now. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Pulling green set. Oh. Now. Yep, checking it. Using it to the final. Yes, sir. So that pin up there is for the rocket. Eight seconds for the rocket. So as is the soft force pretty green. Yeah, don't put wire in it. Just run some 550 cord just to simulate just so we can get there. I'm going to employ something else, right? And for you all, the We came out today to sustain some explosive obstacle reduction or obstacle breaching as part of our MU workup and for the Marines to get some, some more hands-on uh, with the anti-personnel obstacle breaching system or APOBS uh, to employ it in support of their infantry counterparts on the MU. The overall objective of today was for the Marines to sustain and maintain proficiency with the APOBs and for them to get another rep at employing it as part of an ex explosive breach as part of the breach force. This training is important because our Marines have to come out to the field and get the reps and the sets to make sure that when they attach to their infantry counterparts that they're actually enabling the force and that they are a force multiplier uh, performing various engineer tasks in support of the infantry. This skill set makes 2nd Marine Division and specifically BLT-26 more lethal and capable because every tool that our Marines have that they can effectively employ in an expedient manner, in a safe manner, and in a manner that has the greatest effect on the battlefield, hey, it makes this, this is one more thing that engineers bring to the fight. The Anti-Personnel Obstacle Breaching System, or APOBS, is a two-pack man portable system that enables a team of engineers or infantry to explosively reduce anti-personnel mines and wire obstacles. Post-blast, it gives you a lane that's about one meter wide and 45 meters in length. The charge itself is a, a linear demolition charge consisting of 108 grenades connected together with explosive detonating cord, and it's employed with a rocket. The rocket drags the line charge out of the two packs, stretches it out in a straight line. It has two means of initiation. You can either use the factory installed initiator, which is a 15 second time delay, or you can use a command initiated uh, shock tube that instantaneously fires the rocket on command of the breach team. And regardless of the initiation method, eight seconds after the rocket is deployed and the charge is stretched out, the line charge will detonate in a single impulse, reducing the anti-personnel mines and clearing that lane through a wire obstacle. Out of the four types of reduction methods that we use, being mechanical, physical, explosive, or just other means, this is one of the more ideal types of breaches or ty types of reduction because it gives standoff from the obstacle between that obstacle and the reduction team. They don't have to physically get directly on top of that minefield or directly on top of the obstacle to place something like a Bangalore or to use bolt cutters to mechanically breach that wire. So this gives standoff and it also reduces time on target and the weight of the reduction asset. This one APOBS is the same as 17 or 18 Bangalore torpedoes. It's drastically lighter, drastically reduces time on target. Today, from the time they stepped off on their assault till the time detonation happened was a minute and 35 seconds. Uh, out here, we're practicing some, some explosive breaching. Um, the commanding general came out, uh, learned a little bit about the uh, APOBS. Uh, it's another explosive breaching asset that we have that we can employ uh, for our supported uh, rifle battalion. The overall objective is for one, for our Marines to get another rep at um, executing an explosive breach, especially with um, the APOBs. It's not something we get to shoot very often, uh, but it's a huge capability that we can bring to the table. Um, and then also, so the commanding general can get some situational awareness on what it does, what its capabilities and limitations are, and then how we can employ it in the future. So this system makes Second Marine Division more lethal by, again, just bringing another asset, another capability to the table. Um, when we talk about breaching, especially if we're in a near-peer environment, um, when they're in a deliberate defense and with a, you know, elaborate obstacle plan, um, being able to breach their obstacles and, you know, assault the objective is vastly important, especially for our Apex battalions going out the door. So it's two packs. One's around 50 pounds, one's 60 pounds. Uh, you lay it down. There's grenades and what looks like a tube sock, uh, and there's a rocket. The rocket shoots 35 meters away. There's an obstacle. It lays over the obstacle and all those grenades uh, detonate with the pack and cuts the sea wire or whatever obstacle minefield uh, that, it, that it encounters.
I think the most important thing we talk about when we breach is uh, time on target. Uh, getting time on target down when we mechanically breach, it takes a while to cut through wire. Uh, right here, when you can emplace the APOBs, it was under two minutes, and then you know detonation takes maximum 23 seconds. So uh, that time on target being so low allows you to uh, keep the tempo, um, keep the momentum as you're maneuvering and uh, assaulting objectives. This training is important because anytime we can get reps uh, doing live explosive breaching is something that we have to take uh, take a hold of and run with because, again, it's it's kind of hard to do demo around here, uh, but. When we can do explosive breaching, uh, it's, always, it's always a good rep to get in, especially when we have a team going out the door supporting Golf Company 2-6. So.